So disenfranchisement of prisoners is something that shouldn't be tolerated because prisoners are still citizens and with that should be eligible to vote. One mistake in an individual's life shouldn't result in them being entirely eschewed from everything around them. In order for these prisoners to reintegrate into an integral part of our society, they should be able to participate in the most simple democratic process there is. Casper Walsh, a writer for The Guardian, said, A prisoner's rehabil rehabilitation as a safe, responsible, and productive member of society must include the most basic right of democratic process, the right to choose who governs us. To remove this right dehumanizes prisoners. The Charter of Rights and Freedoms pertains to all citizens of a country, including those who are convicted of wrongdoing, and we should start to realize that. By not allowing prisoners to vote, we are returning to the days of discriminating certain groups of people. Gone should be the days we are returning. Gone should be the days of discrimination, but sadly, it still exists. If a person is convicted of a crime but not currently in prison, they are still eligible to vote. So why should it be any different for the prisoners that are in jail? Both people have committed crimes, but one can vote and the other can't simply based on their location. That doesn't seem right to us. To us, it boils down to disenfranchisement and how wrong it is. Prisoners are still citizens and with that to retain all of their rights and disenfranchisement doesn't allow that to happen. Okay. Great. Back to you guys for your opening points. The vote to write in liberal it, oh, whoops. <laughs> the, the right to vote is given to every citizen since we've become a democracy. Since for hundreds for when since the Greeks invented democracy. Or the foundations of it. It's given to every citizen that abides by the rules. Now, a man named Olson, back in 1982, killed 11 people. 11 people, gone. No right to vote. No right to say anything. Do they don't pay taxes? They don't vote. They don't have any input on this world. Because he said he, he just didn't want to. Let them. He, uh, he killed 11 boys and girls, not even both age of voting. They could not contribute to this world, and he showed no remorse. And not until RCMP gave him $100,000 to his estranged wife and child did he relieve where their bodies were. He's currently serving 11 life sentences in a prison in Quebec. So you're telling me he should be allowed to vote? That's your opening statement? Yeah. Great. Okay, back to you guys for your four points. How can we expect to integrate prisoners back into society as hardworking middle class if we don't involve them in the most and the most ugh, if we don't involve them at all in the democratic process that makes us who we are? Tons of countries around the world don't even have a democratic process, and we're saying that you're saying that because a man made a mistake because he murdered, murdered some people, that if you say that he took away the rights of the their rights to vote, that he doesn't deserve to vote, but you say that. Ugh, <laughs> you decided that it's, even though he took away those rights, but that you can take away his rights, because that just seems like a double standard to me. And with that as well, um, voting is a basic human right, um, and many people have yet to, ex yet to experience it. Um, there's still suffrage for many people. Um, there's certain countries, Vatican City, Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, United Arab Emirates, where there's still people who are not legally allowed to vote in that country. And that, like, that just shouldn't happen. Stopping something as basic as voting from taking place with certain demographics, genders, or races reminds us that, r reminds us back to the archaic practices of the 1940s, at the time when women were only recently able to vote all over Canada. Until 1920, most colonies or provinces required eligible voters to own property or have taxable income. It excluded the poor and working class, any minorities that were visible. While researching for this debate, um, we saw the term civil debt came up quite a bit. Um, and that's a suspension of normal rights as citizens while incarcerated. Um, and like, by cutting them off entirely from society, when they get out, how are they supposed to know what's going on? How are they supposed to know how things work? So they need to be able to keep their rights as a prisoner so that once they come out, they know what to do and they know what's happening in their country. Okay, those are the four points. Thank you very much, you guys.
guys. So Kelvin and Preston, whenever you guys want to start. I'll give you an example of the United States, other than North Dakota and Ohio. Those are the only two those are the only two states in the United States that of the information of 2015 are allowed to have prisoner voting. And yet they still have major turnouts for the voting, for one thing. And for two, they find that, especially in especially in Florida, they find that someone who has the right to vote, who is criminally seen as insane or criminally charged, shouldn't have that idea. A recent the last federal study on how much prisoner how much taxpayers spend to keep prisoners in prison has now gone up 46% from the previous year. This recent study took place in 2015 where the average prisoner costs $117,000 to keep in prison. That's more than lower income and middle class makes. So to allow these people to commit a crime against other people, take murder, violent crimes to hurt another citizen who contributes to society, and for them to get an education, health care, and the right to vote, and make more and have more money put towards them than a child struggling in a lower class family, that just doesn't seem right. Now I have a question for you. Why should someone who is out on the street, who's living in, a, let's say, a neighborhood or a town that's hard to read, like hard, that doesn't have major polling stations in the area, why should they have a hard time to vote than prisoners? Why should, why should homeless people have a harder time to vote than prisoners? Prisoners in a provincial jail or a federal jail can go and sign up on October 9th through email or through phone to become, to go and vote. Yet a, uh, and yet, a person who is homeless needs to have either two forms of ID and a reference by someone who is currently a homeowner in Canada, or they need a letter of recommendation from a state or, uh, or, or a provincial candidate to go out and vote. I, that just does not seem right to me. Since last year, the prisoner total has gone up from 12,000 citizens to 15,000 citizens, giving us one of the highest records of incarcerated people in all of Canadian history. Now, with 15,000 people costing over $117,000 per person a year, that's 15,000 people who decided to commit crimes. They did this knowingly. Many of them, majority of prisoners, are repeat offenders. Yeah. Great. Now you guys both get. Okay. Are you aware that over that women make up over thirteen thousand of people uh, of people in jail? The population is over across North America, and that's since twenty fourteen. That's higher than the population of Sedona, Arizona, and it's left almost half the population of Monaco. Were you aware that incarcerated prisoners take up over nine million of the world's population? That's over thirteen percent. Women consist of the majority of Canadian citizens, so it makes sense that they were the majority in prison. That, that is a consistent statistic across the board. Well, when you take away the rights to vote from prisoners, and a majority of women, and a majority of people of color, and a majority of Native Americans and Hispanic Americans and visible and invisible minorities are in prison, then you're taking away the right to vote from any invisible minority. You're taking away their ideas and their interests and everything like that, so that they are silenced by the people who are the white 1% American. Okay, so I'm sorry, but this is a debate about people in jail. I know the majority are people who come of different races, but this is not a race dispute. This is people actually in jail for crimes that they committed to other people. For example, drug dealers. What They sell drugs to people, get them addicted to it. I mean, and know it's all self-choice. But they're still selling it to these people. They're ruining their lives. Only 39% of prisoners consist of minorities. Uh, and no minority. Where did you find those statistics? Federal, because I found 59% The Canadian federal website. No, for, for 
59% of the prisoners across North America, we're not talking about just Canada, you guys brought up statistics from America, 59% of prisoners across North America consist of visible minorities. Well, can we, I, but the, can, I'm going off the last report on the Canadian federal website, the government website. They reported 39% of prisoners consist of First Nations, Inuit, or African American. We're not talking about Canada. You guys brought up statistics. We're talking about can Canada. America. You need to decide where your debate We're not lies. About America. You guys talked about Mer America and North Dakota as having a the right to vote. As a comparison. It doesn't matter. You guys are, you can't talk about one, one part of the, sec the spectrum and then bring up another part of the spectrum and change all your statistics. Okay, what you're bringing up is I was just making a point showing that the U.S. still gets a major pull from people who are not in jail. We get a major pull from people not in jail. I was just bringing up that point. I wasn't bringing up that we are only taking statistics from America. We have more statistics from the Canadian Federal website. Uh, the B Hold on, I even got a name for you too. BC Civil Rights. We even got, we even made, I even made at least a phone call to the BC Civil Rights and got information on this. So don't try to throw away us from not making Canadian statistics in our presentation or in our debate. I, I, I will agree. People, everybody should be allowed to vote. But when you cross the line to harm another person who pays their bills, that contributes to society, and then you go to prison and get the right to vote, and you get more money put towards you than they do, working every day. What about people who are wrongly accused of a crime? That's a whole other thing. Should they not vote because someone wrongly accused them or framed them for a crime? Well, they, if they're in jail, that means they were prosecuted and they were, that's a whole other legal problem. That's not had anything to do. If you're wrongly accused, that's a whole other thing. That's a justice problem. That's not a voting Well, problem. how do you expect people to follow the justice system? If they can't even vote for the just, like if they can't, how are they supposed to follow the justice system if they can't even be in the process of deciding who runs the justice system? That doesn't sound fair to anybody. It's that's it's not fair. It's not also not fair that you commit a crime and hurt another person that's never done anything wrong. You should okay. I'm gonna use Olson as another reference. He killed 11 people and had no signs of remorse. He forced the RCMP to pay him a hundred thousand dollars to reveal their bodies so their families could have peace. And you're saying a man like that should be able to vote after killing 11 people? A man like that has life experience. Even if he did do something like that to 11 people, he knows the wrong way to do that because he's in jail now. So why would you take away his right to vote and say, oh, you have no real opinions, you don't deserve to vote, you don't deserve universal suffrage because you made a mistake. I understand that it's mistakes. murder. I understand that it's murder, but just because someone did a mis like made a mistake, that doesn't mean they don't have life experiences. They could contribute to making society better. Okay, you want to? I understand. All right. <laughs> eleven people is not one mistake. That's eleven. This is not manslaughter, mind you. This is premeditated. He actively seek to kill these people. You want someone who thinks it's okay to murder to be able to vote who runs the country? That, 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 that is self-destructive. That's sem Excellent open debate, you guys. Okay. <laughs> Disenfranchisement. To deprive of the right to vote, to deprive of power, to be marginalized, to deprive of, the right, of a right or privilege. What makes it our decision to take the rights away from people? The archaic class system that we live in takes rights away from people that, that can lend a different perspective. It disenfranchises people, and it gives majority voting rights to the white 1%. It takes away rights from hardworking Hispanic Americans, Native Americans, African Americans, who make up over 59% of people incarcerated. We live in a democratic society, a privilege of, of its own, a place where the right to vote is a simple, ordinary, basic right. It shouldn't be a privilege handed to us by people who think we deserve it. Universal suffrage is fundamental to our society and its advancement. People who put, are put in prison for a few different reasons. To protect the innocents and to rehabilitate them back into society. Where does it say that rehab should strip people of their rights in its process? People in prison should be afforded the same rights as you and me. And when we take away the rights that make them who they are as citizens, we, and we still demand that they obey our law and follow our justice system, we turn ourselves into hypocrites. We, turn our, we as Canadians can pretend that we champion for all rights and privileges, and we can let anyone join our country and accept everyone that does. And we can give people a country to flee to and call home. But until we take care of our citizens and afford them the rights that they deserve, we are simply hypocrites. 
It's time that we remember that voting is a fundamental right, not a privilege. Thank you. Alright, back to Calvin and Preston. Go ahead. As is Canadian people, for example, Calvin and I do not want criminally insane people voting for our future. We're still young in this. Like, I'm still not of the age of vote to vote. I don't want someone who's in jail, who's seen as criminally insane, who has murdered 11 people, who has murdered 89 people, who's even committed one murder to decide where I go for my future. What I don't want them to decide my future. There are 48,000, uh, or 4,800 numbers of offenders sentenced for life. To put that in perspective, Canada's life sentence is seen as 25 years and up, or even 13 years and up, depending on the crime. I don't want those people who have committed a tough enough crime where they are they, where they are incarcerated for life to choose where I'm going to in my future, for my future to be seen as when they are never going to see what it's like when they get out. That's 